Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. A question I get quite often is how I construct the 3D printed molds for the Buster Beagle 3D injection molding machine. I thought I would put together a little video showing you how it can be done with free software and a fairly inexpensive SLA 3D printer. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to my Thingiverse page if you're using my particular mold frame where I provide files in there for the mold cavity that goes inside of this 3D printed mold. So you'll notice that there are four different types. So if you come down here, there's some that say uh, flat bottom and these flat bottom ones are these ones that are standing up on their side and when I mean flat bottom, what I mean is this uh, area here is flat because to make it so that the mold doesn't fall out of the cavity because it's inserted from the back, all of these uh, all of these faces are tapered. So when it says flat bottom, what that means is this is a flat bottom on the on this uh, bottom side. And what that will allow you to do is print it vertically on your 3D printer. Uh, the other ones that don't say uh, flat bottom, that just say mold template, those are the entire cavities. And these are more meant to be printed flat on the build surface. So you could just come over here to this Thingiverse file and download any of the ones that you want. There's one for the left and one for the right. Because if you notice in here, there are multiple locations where you can uh, choose to use your sprue hole. So there's two on the top. And then I also put two in the back of the case in case you wanted your sprue location to be, you know, flat in the mold instead of from one of the sides. Um, so when you look at these molds, you'll notice that there is some of those marks. This one's on the other side. Um, but th it already has the holes in it for all of those pieces. So I'm going to download the mold template left and the mold template right for what I'm doing right now. Um, and the program that I'm going to be opening this in is called Blender. And Blender is a free open source modeling package. Now this is a polygonal modeling package, which is what you typically author things like STLs in. Um, I am personally not a CAD modeler. I'm a polygonal modeler by trade. So I don't actually use this program, Blender. The program that I use is called Maya. So this is the model that I am going to be using. But this software is fairly expensive. It's a couple thousand dollars a year. So I'm not going to show you how to do it in this program. I'm going to show you how to do it in this Blender program, which functions pretty much the same way, and it's completely free. So um, I thought it would be better to not show you how I do it in this Maya program, but do it in Blender. Um, and if you come to the website, you can download it completely free. Now before you even get into where you want to generate the mold, I highly recommend uh, this plastic injection molding video on YouTube. Uh, there is this uh, gentleman on there called Bill Hammock and in his video he really goes over a lot of things that you want to kind of take into account when you're doing injection molding. Now this is this is really for um, you know, more modern injection molding and not necessarily for the plunger type of machine that, that I use. But a, a lot of the stuff is the same, such as draft angles and parting lines and, and keeping things uh, situated. So it's less than 10 minutes and I highly recommend it uh, just for general knowledge of what you can and can't do with, uh, with an injection mold. All right. So I'm going to go into Blender. And again, I just picked this program up yesterday because I didn't want to show this process in Maya because it doesn't really help to show this whole process in a program that a lot of you aren't going to purchase. So if I fumble or if I do something wrong or if you are a Blender guru, 
uh, please forgive me. Uh, I pretty much picked this up yesterday just to see if I could do it, and, and, and I can. Um, so I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to hit General. And so this is the Blender interface. Um, I won't go too much into how to use Blender completely. I'm just going to go over the stuff to create the mold. So if you come over in the scene collection, the first thing I'm going to do is select the camera and then shift select all the way to the light, which selects everything. And I'm going to hit delete. Okay, I'm actually going to cut in here. So I've already completed this video and I'm coming back because it, it's extremely long. So I thought what I would do first is show a very abridged version of the entire process. And then if you want more information in the timeline, you can see where this chunk will end and it'll go to a longer section of explanation. Um, and so if you're okay with what you see here, you can kind of skip over that whole other section and then get uh, to later parts of the video. So I'm just going to show you a very quick version of this entire video. So I'm going to go to File import and then I'll click STL this I'm gonna click the two flat bottom versions of the STL and there you have both of them so I'm going to hide one and now I'm going to import the model or STL I want to uh, make the mold of so for this one I'm just going to be using this coin so you can see this is just a regular you know mold of a quarter that I had gotten from the internet. Okay, I'm gonna come up here to object, set origin, and I am going to geometry to origin. Okay, all right. So now I'm gonna rotate this, and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so for this particular mold, I want to come in from the top. So I will have the sprue location in the middle. So I'm going to hit the Move tool, move this over. Now, in these 3D printed uh, STLs that we have generated, um, if you see where these, these little divots are, that's where the um, holes are in the 3D printed mold. And there's two in the back here. But we can come in here and move any of these um, just out of the way so that it's not interfering with our mold. Because the only one that I want to use is the one up here. So I'm just going to select that. Go into edit mode. Go into see through. So I don't miss any on the back. Move that. Move that. Okay. So on this one, I'm actually going to do it twice. So I have this, and I'll move it over. And then Control D, Escape, and I'm going to duplicate it and move on to the other side. Then I'm going to come up to Add Mesh UV Sphere. Now the diameter of this is uh, 7 millimeters. This is in uh, millimeters as well, but um, down here it's the radius, so half of the diameter. So that's 3.5 millimeters. Okay, then I am going to rotate it. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so that the hemisphere is facing up. I'm going to bring that all the way up to the top. Now I'm going to go into top view, go back into edit mode, select faces, go to see through so it doesn't miss anything on the back. Come over here to extrude region and with XYZ move this down. Hit the move tool. So what you want to do in here is you want to make sure that you go beyond the section that you're injecting into and that's so that you have this cold slug well so when the cooler plastic is coming into your 3D uh, print or any mold the the plastic that's right at the tip of your uh, injection molding machine 
uh, it's usually colder so it's going to spit the cold plastic all the way to the bottom and then the only part that's going to fill into the mold will be the molten plastic okay so now I'll have that there I'm going to move these other ones over slightly okay so now I'm going to go to add mesh UV sphere uh, I'm going to keep the same radius and that's fine now I'm going to rotate I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees move it out to the side and then again go into edit mode I'm already in see-through select that extrude move this over to the other side okay object mode move that to the center and then the last thing that I want to do is have the gate that goes into the molds so I'm going to come back up to add mesh UV sphere and this one I want to make the entrance um, I think I'm going to make it two millimeters so the radius would be one millimeter I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees move that into this part of the mold come up to edit select those and move that all the way to the other side hit move okay okay so once you've uh, generated those get out of see-through mode okay so what you want to do is you want to select the base here get out of edit mode go into object mode and then I'm gonna come over to the add modifier I'm gonna add a modifier add a boolean so the first two things I want to boolean are these coins so I can either click down here um, where it says the object and it has a list or you can hit this little eye um, eyedropper thing and you can pick the ones you want so I just know I need the coin single and you won't see anything happen until you turn off the object so it's done the process but it hasn't um, it hasn't turned off the part that you were using to cut into so if I turn off the coin single you can see that it has now boolean that object into this mold now again this this is only visual right now you either need to come up here and hit apply um, or you can apply this when you're exporting which I recommend in case you make any uh, mistakes and, and need to go back so I'm gonna do the same thing for all of these other pieces now so I'll select the base come up to add modifier click on boolean and then on this one and again I'm, I'm doing the difference here because I want it to subtract so there's the coin single and you see if I hide that then I then see the coin single there okay and the the other reason that you might not want to get rid of those coins is because I'm going to be doing all of this same process to the other side of the mold as well okay so I'm just gonna go in and create all of those bullions and I'll show you what that looks like okay so I've gone in created all those bullions I can turn off all of these and you can see that they're now cut into the molds so I would do the exact same thing for the other side now the only other thing that I want to do here is I want to create air vents so places for the trapped air that's inside of the mold to escape uh, when you're injecting into this so I will go to add mesh I'll add a cube and then in here I'm gonna make this really small because you want it small enough for the air to escape but not small enough for the plastic to escape okay so I just made it 0.1 millimeters and then I'm just gonna scale this up kind of scale this out 
Okay. And rotate it 90 degrees. And so I'm just going to put, I might put two air vents. So I'll put one, well, I'll just do one. Uh, I'll put one in the center. And I just want it to just kind of touch the top of the surface. And then Control D, Escape, move it to the other side. Uh, I can then select both of these, go to Object, and then Join. Select my base uh, mold template right, flat bottom. Go to Add Modifier, Boolean. And then select that cube. Okay, so you can see it has just a little divot there for the air to escape, but not it won't be big enough for the plastic to escape. Okay, so let's say I did this to both sides. I then want to select the object that I want to export. I'm going to come up to File, Export, and I'm going to export an STL. And then in here, I'm just going to call this one Coin Test. Now the, the thing that you want to worry about here is you have this apply modifiers. So that's going to, that'd be the same thing as clicking on each of these and hitting apply so that it actually makes uh, the geo the same as, um, as what you've cut into it. Because right now that's just visual. It, it's, not, it's not changing the geometry itself. So if you want these to apply, you want to hit that apply modifiers. And then because the only thing that I want to export right now is the mold template, uh, I'm going to hit selection only and then export. And so if you were to look at my coin tests, there it is. So there would be half of the mold that then goes into the aluminum mold. So you would just do the same thing for the other half. So that's the very quick and dirty, easy way to do it. Now, if that was too fast or you want a more, um, more thorough explanation of all the things plus some extras, uh, watch the next part of this uh, video. Um, if that all made sense to you and you're good with this, then uh, you can skip the next section and then go to the following section that goes into something uh, about conformal cooling. Uh, and then the section after that is when uh, I take this into the slicer for the 3D printer. If you see down here in the bottom right corner, um, now you can see every time I, I click a button or I hit a, uh, a key on the keyboard, it'll tell you what, what I'm pressing. Um, and that's just to kind of help you see what it is I'm doing here. So, you know, I'm clicking the Alt button and hitting the left mouse button to kind of rotate around. Uh, so just look in that bottom corner if you get stuck as to what I'm actually doing. Now the next thing that I want to do is when you open up Blender, it's working in meters, but all of the modeling things that I do uh, because they're fairly small and precise, I do everything in millimeters. So I want to change the unit scale of Blender to millimeters so that uh, everything that I do in here kind of makes more sense to me when working at a smaller scale. So I'm going to come over here to the scene properties and then in that's this little thing right here where my mouse is and I'm going to click on units click the drop down. Metric is fine. Uh, right here where it says meters, I'm going to change that to millimeters. And then up here where it says unit scale, I'm going to change that to 0 0.001. Okay, so now everything that I do in here will be done in millimeters. So the first thing that I want to do after I've changed the unit scale is I'm going to import in those two STLs that I downloaded from Thingiverse. So go to File, Import, and then click on STL. And then I've created a folder where I have some of these. So I'm going to 
grab the mold template right and the mold template left and say import STL. Okay, so that model is now in here. And you can see over here we have mold template left and mold template right. If I take this eyedropper up here or the eye icon and click on it, I can hide either or. But you can see that this is the inside of that cavity. So these are the two top sprue locations that I, that I modeled into here. And you can also see how it tapers um, from the middle back. So the back is smaller than the front. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to import the model that I'm going to be using as a, a negative for the mold. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to import STL and this is going to be this lock high file. Okay. So right off the bat I can see that this is not in the proper orientation that I want. So I'm going to hide the top here real quick or the left and then I can click on this rotate icon over here and I'm going to rotate this down and if you click on this little rotate on the bottom here you can see the angle that you just rotated that so I want to rotate it to negative 90 degrees and now you can see that it's sitting flush in this face that I'm gonna use this model to carve into um, but the way that I modeled this, I also have this part as the sprue location where you see that line. So I'm also going to rotate it 90 degrees in the other axis. So I'm going to click on that and say 90. And so that is the final orientation that I want this particular model to sit so that it lines up with that sprue hole location. Okay. Okay, so now right as this model sits, if you think about it, this part on the bottom is going to um, carve out a section in this bottom face. But when you look at the top of this, this is also going to carve into that other section. Now, the, the reason for that is because the part on the top is going to include all of the the extra geo here um, so what I need to do first is break this model into two different pieces so that I can use one to carve into one section of that mold and then I'm going to apply or add this section into the top section of the mold so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on it uh, and then right up here in the top left where it says object mode, if I change that to edit mode, you now can see the STL and all of the edges that are on it. Um, and this is showing all of the edges and vertices that you have on your model. And when, whenever you import an STL into something, it shows you uh, every, every single edge. Um, and that's going to make it a little bit harder to do what I want to do next. So I'm going to click on that Y up here so that I can see everything from an orthographic side view. And then if I come up here to the top left, I'm going to select the Faces button. Um, and before I select, if I was just to select and then and then try to do something here it hasn't selected any of the faces on the back because it's only selecting what you can see so um, I'm gonna go up here to where this says toggle x-ray and if you click x-ray then you're now seeing through the model and uh, I'm gonna go back to those faces and I'm going to select just this top here and now I'm gonna click that toggle x-ray again and now you can see that I've I've selected some other faces and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get rid of these triangles because it just makes it harder to select what I what I want to do next so I am gonna come over to face 
and I'm going to click on tr um, tries to quads and you can see it's made all of those um, what are three-sided faces, four-sided faces, which is just easier to work with. So now what I want to do is I want to take, sorry, again, I'm, I'm not a Blender user, so I keep clicking on things that I would click on in Maya, uh, which is not correct. Um, so I'm going to go back to that face mode, and I'm going to select a face, and then I'm going to hit Shift and double-click the face next to it, and what it's done is it's selected every face in that loop and then what I want to do is I want to come to mesh and then separate and I'm going to separate the selection and now you see how that model has lost all of its edges and that's because I'm only in edit mode in the current um, object that I'm working with and not this one anymore because I've now de basically deselect or separated it from this object. So if you go back to object mode, you can see that I can select this one just by itself and it's created a, a new model here. And then I have my original model. So then what I want to do is I'm going to go select that original model again. I'm going to select edit mode. And I, I still have these two pieces as a single model, even though they're separated by geometry now. They're still considered one object. So I'm going to go back to that separate, and I'm going to separate by loose parts. So what that has done now is I have this, so if I go back to object mode, I have this one object that is now separated from the rest of the object and then I have these two other pieces. So I'm going to take these two other pieces, so I just clicked on one, control click to the other, and I am going to go to Object, and then Join. So now I've added these two together. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to double click on this and rename this to Lock Bottom, and then I will change the name of this one to Lock Top. Okay. So now I'm going to go into that lock bottom and I'll hide the other one for, for right now. And I'm going to go back into edit mode. But right now if you came in here and you selected the vertices and you clicked on that and then I hit W to go into move, you'll see that it's, it's not connected anymore because it was two objects that were separated. So what I want to do is go back into that x-ray mode. I'm going to select everything, so every single one of my vertices is selected. I'm going to go to Mesh, and then I'm going to go to Merge, and then I'm going to say Merge by Distance. And so now, if I go and I select that vert, and I try to move it, they're all moving together. Okay. All right. So now, again, I have the two models. I have the top and the bottom. But right now, these are, these are open models. So when you go to intersect these into those other mold halves, you're going to have a problem because it, it's, not, it's not watertight. Uh, think of it like uh, an, an enclosed object. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is take this top and I'm going to go into select it, go back into edit mode. And so I'm going to zoom in here. And I am going to select this bottom edge. So if you come up here on the left, I'm going to click on edges. And again, I'm going to double click on one of the edges. And what that has done is it has selected the entire edge around. Um, and now I want to go to extrude so you can click this extrude region button and I don't want to do it by the normal up here that you can see in the top left I want to do it by XYZ so I'm going to click on XYZ and then I am going to extrude it down uh, clicking on that little blue uh, cross down here and then what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to click it again and I'm just going to come down ever so slightly 
and then come up to this mesh, merge, and I want to merge at center. So what that has done is it pulled that entire ring into the center. So now you can see this is uh, an enclosed object. There are no open faces to it. It's what is considered watertight. Okay, so this one is okay. Go back into object mode. And now I want to select the bottom. Now, what I want to happen on here is I want this to stick out of the mold. But if you remember, this was the bottom of the, uh, of the model that we were just working with. So even though I'm seeing it right now as it would be sticking out of the mold, that's really just a render thing in Blender where I can see both sides. But really, if you look at the faces of this object, there, there is always a direction that the faces are pointing, and so it's not pointing in the direction that you would think. So if I come over here to this little button up here that says shading, and I select back face culling, what back face culling does is it doesn't show me the back side of a face. It only shows me the front side of a face. So if you notice here, uh, when I'm looking from the bottom, everything looks okay. But when I look from the top, it all disappears. And that's because the normals of this object are faced in the opposite direction. So what you want to do is you want to come into edit mode. I'm going to go into that x-ray again. Select faces. Select all of my faces. And then I am going to come into mesh, normals, and then flip. And what that has done is it's flipped the direction that the face uh, is facing so that what was all facing towards the bottom is now facing towards the top. And this is really important when, you, when we run a process later that it knows which way the faces were supposed to be facing. So if I go back into object mode, you can see now it's the bottom that is, is missing and not the top. All right, so I'm going to go back into edit mode. And just like I did with the other half of this mold, uh, I'm going to select my edges, so which is this bottom, this outside edge. Uh, I'm over here. I'm already in extrude region. I'm going to extrude it down. And then I am going to extrude it inwards. So I'm just going to go down one more time, just ever so slightly, so you see it come down. And then I'm going to go to Mesh, Merge, Merge at Center. And this is now an enclosed object as well. So right now, I have my lock bottom. And then if I unhide the lock top, I have the lock top. I have my mold template left and my mold template right. So the first one that I want to do is, is to this top. So I'm going to turn off mold template left and I am also going to turn off the lock bottom. So what I want to do is I want to take this model and intersect it into right where the parting line is. And this was already kind of set up to where, where I want the parting line is right on the top surface of this, this model right here. Um, you'll notice though that where I have these um, basically registrations for where the sprue holes are is intersecting my part. So I want to get rid of that real quick. So I'm going to come over to this mold template right. I'm going to click over here to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to select all of these vertices that are here. And then I'm going to click on move and I'm just gonna move those vertices all the way up. Now, I could go in here and actually clean this up and take out all of these edges so that it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but I, I do wanna know where that is for later. So just moving it up here to the top will be suffice for just now. I can move all of these other ones as well, um, but for right now, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna leave them. So I'm gonna go back into object mode. 
and I'm going to unhide that lock top. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to use this model to what is called Boolean into this, into my mold model. So with the mold model selected, I'm going to come over here to the modifier properties over here on the right. And then over here where it says add modifier, I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to click Boolean. And so down here, we have a couple different options. We have intersect, union, and difference. Um, and so the one that I want to cut into is, is this difference. And I want it to, object is fine. So over here, I can either click on this eyedropper and click on the lock top right here. Or if you just click down here uh, on the box itself, it'll give you the options of the models that you want to cut into. So I want to cut in with the lock top. And so it's done it. Now, you're not going to see anything happen currently because what it's done is it's run the operation, but it doesn't get rid of the other model. So if I come back up here to lock top and I hide it, you'll see that it has now cut into this model, which is great. Now, this is only doing this in the modifier, but it's not doing it to the actual model right now. So if I was to select this mold template right and go back into edit mode, you'll see that it goes away. And the reason for that is I haven't applied the modifier. Um, now, I would actually suggest not applying this modifier in case you have to change something later on. Because when you export this model to send it over to the 3D printing program, you at that point can change this so that it um, so that it applies all of these modifiers. Now, if you just really wanted to do to apply it so that you could make changes to it, uh, you can click on this little drop down arrow right here and hit apply. You'll see the modifier go away. But when you come back to edit mode, you'll see that you can then alter some of these these vertices or you can you can make changes to the model, which I don't want to do right now. So I'm going to undo just control Z. And now I'm back in in this this mode. Uh, and again, the reason why I don't want to change that is let's say that I realize that I didn't want this to be uh, 90 degrees here. I can come back up to that lock top and then click on the rotate tab. And then if I rotate this 90 degrees and then go back and hide it, you'll see that it then does that operation uh, with the changes that I made to the other model. So it's a, it's a pretty good idea to, to keep that in there. Um, okay, so this side looks pretty good for now. Uh, we're going to go in and add the sprue holes in just a minute. But first, I want to do the other side. So I am going to hide both of these. And I am going to show the mold template left and the lock bottom. Okay. All right. So on this one, I'm going to do it a little bit different. So instead of cutting into the model, what I wanted to do was add it to this, this block section because this is going to stick in the other side of the model so that uh, it, it, it conforms to the inside of the top of that lock. But it, it, it's done in much the same way. So I'm going to select the mold template left. I'm going to come over to this modifier properties add modifier, click on Boolean. Now, instead of using this, this difference, what I want to do is, uh, is do a union. So I'm going to click on union. And then over here, I'm going to click on lock bottom. And now if I was to turn off that lock bottom, you'll see that it has now combined those two models into one. 
So now when this is finalized, this whole part will stick into the other side of that, that mold cavity, which is what I want it. Okay. So now I have both the bottom and the top. And if I look from the side here, you can see what it's doing. This model is going to stick into that other model. Um, and this one uh, goes in, in inside of this mold half. Okay, so now we're actually a couple of days later. Um, I've gone back and I want to change the way in which I design this mold. So I've already printed it and uh, a lot of it has to do with changes that I want to make due to the uh, sprue hole location. So the way that it was originally made, the sprue location was right here at the top, which doesn't leave you a lot of room to do much here right at the top. Um, and I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, it, it caused a, a couple of issues. And so I want to go back and change some of that. And again, because we were doing everything in a very non-destructive way, I can easily go back and change any of these things without any problem. So now, instead of the sprue hole location being right next to the, the part, I want to do it on the section that is over here. So we have another sprue location uh, right here at the top, uh, as well as two in the back of uh, this, this part. But I'm going to use the one over here. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to move this stuff over a little bit to the side to give me a little bit of room uh, for that sprue to come down. And part of the reason that I want to put the sprue over here instead of right here, what I want to do is create uh, what is called a cold slug well. So this is a pretty good uh, explanation of what it is. So when the plastic comes into your mold, right at the tip of the nozzle where the uh, plastic is getting injected, there's always, uh, it's always cooler right at that end because it's, you know, it's exposed to the air, whereas everything behind it is molten. So what this cold slug well does is as soon as you shoot the plastic in, that extra little colder piece uh, falls into this little section here and then everything behind it ends up being the more molten um, the molten material so not only does what is in the tip go directly to the bottom and solidify the the plastic flowing through the sprue for the first time also becomes harder because it's the first part that's actually touching the gate so that also then becomes cold. So then that pushes to another cold slug well and then ends. And then the only thing going into your model is that molten plastic. So I want to add the same kind of thing to, to my mold. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I want to do is move this, this lock over to allow for some space where that, uh, where that sprue location is. So again, because this was non-destructive, I could come over here, select both of the model parts. So I'll select the lock top and the lock bottom. Just go from the top. And I can click on the Move tool. And I'm just going to move that over a little bit. OK. And so then if I go back into those mold sections, you can see that it's now over to the side. It's, it's repeated any of its Boolean operations. And now it's, it's given me a, a little bit of extra room to then add it to where, uh, where that other sprue hole location is. Now the other thing on this particular piece is that the section where the plastic flows into this channel, which is this little cut in right here, I want that to face towards where the new uh, sprue hole is going to be. So I'm going to select this lock bottom and I'm going to hit E to rotate and I'm going to rotate that so that that, that little channel 
is facing towards the sprue, so 90 degrees. I can turn it off, and then there you go. Now it's facing towards that part. I'm going to come up to Add and Mesh. UV sphere. I know that the diameter of the sprue hole is seven millimeters, so I am going to make this 3.5 because this is the radius. Okay. Now you can see I have kind of a globe here, so I'm going to rotate that back so that the globe is sitting on its side. So it's 90 degrees. Alright, so I'm going to move this over and up to where that sprue hole location is. Now if you ever want to snap something to uh, another poly, you can use the snap tools up here. So I'm going to snap during transformation and by vertex and then snap with the center. Okay, turn that off. Okay, so that's in the center. I'll snap it up as well. Okay, I've moved that up. Okay, so now what I want to do so I'm going to come into object mode, click on edit, edit mode, and then I'm going to go to see through, select the faces. So I'm going to select everything below the midway point of this sphere. And then I'm going to come to extrude. I'm going to pull that down. Okay, and now I'm going to click on move. I'm going to pull that all the way down until about just just beyond this section where I'm going to uh, cross it into. That's fine. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to do a, a cross section that is now going to go the opposite way. So um, I'm going to make that the same radius as this sphere. So I'm going to go to Add. Oh, I'm still in Edit Mode. So I go to Object Mode, go to Add, Mesh, UV Sphere. I'm going to move that over here. Again, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then go into edit mode, select everything on one side of the hemisphere, click on extrude, pull that out. So I'm going to have it come out to this side a little bit as another little uh, cold slug well. And then I'm going to pull the rest out to this way. Now the one thing that I don't want to do is intersect this top section at all. So uh, any of the markings or any of the places where the sprue is going or the gate is going to attach to the model, I want that to be behind the model because it's just easier to hide when I when I do the cleanup later. Um, so this is never not going to intersect that model. It's just going to sit off to the side. Okay. And then for the other one, what I want to do is go back into object mode and I'm going to add a mesh, another UV sphere. And now this time, I think I want the entrance to the, to the model to be about, let's say, three millimeters. So I'll make this um, let's say two millimeters. So I'll make this, actually I'm going to make it three millimeters, so I'm going to make it 1.5. Okay. I'm going to move that over here. 
And so then I am going to, again, rotate this so that the hemispheres are to the side. So 90 degrees. And now here again, what I want to do is I only want this to be coming in from the bottom. So the first thing that I'm going to do is pull that out again. So edit mode, selecting all of these faces, go to extrude, pull this out over to here. And then now what I want to do is go from the side and then I'm going to pull everything that's in the top hemisphere and then scale it down. So I'm going to select all of these faces. And then you can zoom in and uh, shift select anything that you missed. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to scale these completely down. So I'm just scaling till I get to the center just want to make those flat. Okay, and then I'm going to move all those back down. And again, you can use your snap tools up here. So I'm going to snap, and I want that to move to that vertice. Okay. So now, for this one, I want this to cut into the other side. Okay. So you want it so that it's just breaking the surface. And then it's going to go all the way into here. Okay. All right. So if you look at where this is and where that lock top is going to go, it's going to be able to tuck underneath so that the plastic can flow into that mold cavity. I think that's fine. Okay. So now I'm going to take this mold template left and I am going to boolean all of these spheres into it. Add a modifier Boolean, and this one's going to be cutting into instead of unioning to this. So the sphere, I'm going to close that, add modifier Boolean, select that second sphere, and then finally Boolean, and add the third. So if I was to hide those, you can see the plastic is going to go through. The cold slug is going to go into there. Some of it might go into there. And then it is going to pass uh, the molten plastic into this channel under here, underneath the top part of that other mold. OK. So now I'm going to go do the same thing to the other side using those same pieces. But on this one, I'm not going to do that last sphere because I don't want that to be on the top surface. So select the mold, Boolean. Select that sphere. Add modifier, Boolean. Pick the second one. So if I was to turn those off, there we go. Again, we have the cold slug well and uh, the other sections that will go towards the mold itself. Okay. Now, the only other change that I want to make to this model from uh, what I had initially is. When I, when I first printed this, I printed them flat. And one side did OK, and the other side kind of uh, separated from the build plate slightly on, on my 3D printer. And, uh, and then when I put it in the mold and tightened it for the first time, it snapped in half. So I think even though it takes longer, uh, I, I think I'm going to print these on their sides. 
uh, so that the, the, the part that's going to connect to the build plate is going to be the bottom here and uh, not the, the back face. But instead of going in and redoing um, all of the work that I had already done uh, by using the other STLs, I'm just going to flatten this bottom. So you could just come in here to add mesh cube. So I'm just going to move that down. I'm going to look from the top in x-ray. And you can see this, this inner line here is where that uh, bevel goes, or where that taper goes to on the bottom. So I'm just going to have the box just above that. And you always want, if you're going to flatten the side, don't flatten the side where the plastic is going to go in. Flatten the opposite side uh, because that could cause problems or it'll fill in uh, the section up there if you don't leave that the way that it is. So I'm going to scale this up. Uh, unhide the other side. Scale this up. So if we look from the side, you can see this part will now be flattened. So this can then be placed on its side when, uh, when we're 3D printing it. So then I just do the same thing I was doing for the other ones, and I'll just Boolean that into the shape. Select the cube. Do the same thing to this one. Select that cube. Okay. So now this just gives us a flat section uh, when we're going to print this. Okay, so the final step that we need to do is we need to add some uh, air vents. So when the plastic is injected into the sprue, the, if the mold is tight enough, there's nowhere for the air that's trapped inside of the mold to go. And if you don't vent that air out, then the air gets trapped and you end up with gaps in your final, final product. So what I'm going to do is come up to Add, Mesh, Cube. And you want these to be pretty small, so I'm going to do 0.1 millimeters. Okay, there we go. Very small. Drag that out. Scale that up. Okay. So since the plastic is coming in from this section, I think I'm going to put some vents on this other side. So as everything fills up, uh, it can push out the plastic to the other end. So I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. I'm going to put one in the middle. And again, you want these to be small enough so that the air can escape, but not large enough so that the uh, plastic can escape behind it. So I'm just going to break the surface ever so slightly. Okay, I'm going to put one there. Control D, move, escape. Move one over here. Control D, escape, and move one over here. I'm sure there's a science exactly where you want these, uh, but I'm just putting a few on the other side. I'm going to select all three of these, go to Object, Join, so now it's one mesh. And then um, I'm actually going to do this to the other side, just so again that I don't have any markings uh, on the top. So I'm going to open up the mold left. And then move these down so just above the surface there okay and I'll move these out so that they're still in the area where the air can escape. Okay. 
and then I'll just boolean this into this part again so this is cubo3 and I'll just add another boolean okay so there we have just some air vents so that everything can escape all the air can escape on the once the plastic is injected okay so if this is as far as you want to go this is fine um, I'm gonna do something uh, a little bit further after this point so if you look down in the YouTube description and you look at the chapters um, you can skip uh, to the next chapter after we export this so that uh, you're, you're not going to do that extra step uh, and then you can go right to the slicing of the model for 3D printing but to export it first uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select the object that we want to export we're going to go to go file export STL and then in here I'm going to call this uh, mold final right new. That's fine. And then over here where it says apply modifiers, you want to apply the modifiers so that it actually runs the operations that uh, generate the, the booleans that you see here. Otherwise, it'll just export the model without applying any of this stuff. So you want to hit that or you want to click that apply modifiers. And then the other thing that you want to make sure is clicked is this selection only. So instead of exporting everything at once, you want to uh, export just uh, one object at a time. Uh, you don't want to do both at the same time, especially if you're going to be 3D printing these at the same time. Uh, and that's because you want to slightly separate these two things from each other when you, when you do that. Um, but you don't want to do that before you export because then you're going to be moving where all of these booleans were so uh, I'm just going to export these one at a time so export STL and then I'm going to show and hide the other one which is this side and I'm going to go to file export and then STL and this one I will call left everything looks good export STL okay so again at this point uh, if you don't want to go into the next section you can skip over all the way to the 3d printing but what I'm going to go over now is um, in some of the comments and I'm sorry I can't remember the uh, the user that asked about this but they asked because these are 3D printed, can I do conformal cooling on these parts? And honestly, I didn't know what that was, so I looked it up. And what it is, is this, um, basically, it's passageways for a coolant to go in inside of your mold and cool everything down uh, more efficiently. So instead of you just injecting the plastic and just waiting for everything to cool down it's going to cool from the outside in because obviously whatever is more in the center is going to stay hotter for longer and so what this is trying to do is create uh, channels usually probably of some sort of coolant or fluid uh, i'm going to do it with uh, compressed air uh, just because i don't want to set up any type of uh, liquid coolant uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have uh, some of these kind of tubes that follow along the the uh, the lock and try to cool everything down uh, a little bit sooner now in the previous version that I did this that I didn't like um, I did the same thing but what I did was I came in through one of these side locations and then immediately dipped down into the mold went around it and then I came out this top and then I, I also came out the uh, the holes in the back here as well. Um, so I had a couple of different uh, locations where the the coolant or the air could flow through it. But the problem is, 
if you if you create a hole here and then a small hole here so that the air can flow through on these sides what could end up happening which is what ended up happening to me was if you didn't have this mold tight enough or for whatever reason you ended up getting flashing or or the plastic spilled out of of where you're where you intended the plastic will go into those holes and if those holes then go into the interior of your part it's impossible to get that plastic out so that that's not a real good idea so what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm just gonna have the um, the channels come in the back of this center hole and then I'm gonna have it do kind of a radial turn around that mold and then I'm gonna have a vent that comes out this other back and then that way there's never any uh, chance that any of the plastic that I'm injecting into the top can ever get to any of those other sections where I'm trying to do that coolant so if I ever make a mistake and you know the the flashing over overfills my mold um, I don't ruin my mold and ruin that that entire cooling okay so I'm gonna come back into blender and the the section that has the two holes in the back is the other side so it's the it's the mold top so I'm gonna do it from that okay so I'm going to come up here to add and then I'm going to click curve and then circle and right now I have a 30 millimeter circle which uh, I think is perfectly fine and I am going to move that to where it lines up with my lock okay and now I'm gonna go to see through and I am going to move that down so that it's inside of the mold so with the circle selected I'm gonna come over here to where it says object data properties I'm gonna click on it and go to the geometry tab open up the bevel tab and then here where it says depth uh, I'm going to change that to a radius of 2.5 and as you can see what it's done is I'm going to go and edit it has um, created geometry on that uh, on that circle so I'm going to move it down just a little bit I don't want it to get too close to that because I don't want the pressure of the uh, the mold to break this. Okay. So again, the idea is any of the heat that's being built up in here, when I when I have the air come through this hole in the top, it's going to come through, cycle around that, and then I'm going to exhaust it out uh, out this other side. All right, so now what I want to do is I need to have something for it to port outside. So I'm going to come up here to Add, Curve, Path. And that has generated a path on the top. So I'm going to move that down. And so now if I go into Edit Mode, you'll see that I have these five different control points so uh, I'm going to leave the um, the pivot point in the center here uh, for later on uh, but what I'm going to do on this is come from the side and just select one of those control points and then just move it so I'm going to move it right into where it intersects that that circle I had before and you can see you're, you're only moving the control points and it's creating a, a Bezier curve that follows uh, where you go. So I'm going to move all of these. I'm going to take that last one and have it go out the center. And if you need to create more of these, uh, you can. You can just select one of the control points and then come over here to the extrude and then just like you were extruding um, any of the other uh, edges before 
you can just select this uh, XYZ up here and then I can move this straight down. And that creates another control point that you can then uh, manipulate. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Let me move that up a little bit. Okay. All right, so just like with the circle, you can come in to this um, object data properties, and I'm going to come down to the bevel. And on this one, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So if the other one was 2.5, I'm going to make this one 2. Actually, I might make it 1.5. 1. 1. I think that'll be fine. OK. So I'm going to go back into object mode. So now what I want to do, because this is no longer centered, I can't just duplicate it around in a circle. I, I'm going to have to go in and generate this a couple of times. Um, but what I can do is do a Control D and then Escape. And then I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. And then again from the side. Uh, if I go into edit mode, I can then edit these parts to wherever I need them to be. Now, when it comes to the center, you can you can see where that center hole is going to be. I found that if you if you're doing something like this, you don't want to have the exit of all of the uh, all of the tubes all in the same place. It has a little bit of an issue when running the Boolean operation of knowing exactly if, if everything is right on top of each other. It, it sometimes gets confused when doing that, running that Boolean operation. So I like to offset them uh, slightly. So like on this one, I go into edit mode and, you know, I, I still want it to go all the way to that um, kind of the end of that circle. But I want them to, to somewhat overlap rather than completely being uh, identical in the same spot. Okay, so I'm going to speed up uh, what it looks like for me to put a bunch of these together. But I'm essentially going to just have a bunch of these uh, spoke off like a bicycle wheel and uh, so that the air can come in and then I'll create uh, another one that comes from that and then goes out to where this other port is so when I'm blowing air inside it'll come up come across all these tubes which should help cool down the center and then cool around the side and then exhaust out the other side so I will set that up right now as you can see here, I'm, I'm basically rotating these every 30 degrees um, just to make kind of that spoke of the bicycle. Okay, so as you can see, I have them going around every 30 degrees hopefully cool that middle section down a little bit. Okay, so that's all the air going in. So now I need to have an exhaust that comes out to this this other port over here. Okay, it's a little bit hard to see. It, it, it's over here. I, I pulled it down too far earlier. I'm going to go to Add Curve Path. Move this over here. Click on Edit. 
Move that all the way down. Okay. Alright. Then again, this one is going to get the treatment of coming over to Object Data Properties, down to the bevel, and change that. Let's do 2.5, maybe a little bit smaller, 2.3. just want to make sure that it's not intersecting in a weird way with anything else. I think that'll be fine. Okay. Now, now I want to boolean these into this object, but you can't boolean a a NURBS path. So, what you have to do is convert that into geometry. So I'm going to hide this mold template. So that's essentially what I'm going to be using for the Boolean. Everything looks OK. All right. So what you want to do is you want to select the Bezier circle or, or whatever you use to create these, uh, these tubes. Uh, and then in object mode, you're going to come to object, convert, and then mesh. And then down here it'll say, do you want to keep the original? Uh, I like keeping the original uh, curves because if I ever have to go back and change it, um, I don't want to trash the original. So you see here I have the original Bezier curve and then now I have one that is geometry. So instead of just viewing geometry, it is geometry. Now I've also found that if you take all of these and you um, combine them, then they don't boolean correctly. But you can select all of these at the same time and then go to Object and Convert and then convert those to Mesh. And then you'll see you have all of these new NERV paths over here. And then now these new NURB paths, so I'm going to hide all these. These new NURB paths are what you want to Boolean into the, uh, the mold half. So I'm going to go through again, not show that whole process because it's going to take a second. Uh, and then I'll come back once I have Boolean these into that object. So while I was just doing this, I realized that you can um, do a lot of these operations at the same time instead of me going through each and every one of these. Uh, what you can do is select all of the paths that you want to do this to. So in my instance, all of these. Uh, you, you hit Control G which uh, will create everything as a new collection or a group. And I'm going to call this outlet. So you can see this, this created a whole new scene collection, which is this outlet, which has those 12 pieces in it. Uh, one of them I already added to the, um, to the Boolean. And then I can come back up to this mold template right. And then instead of this saying object, it now says collection. So instead of object, you go to collection. And then I'm going to select the collection for the outlet. Depending on how many things you have in that collection, it might take a second. Okay, so once it goes through that, I can hide this. I have all of these entering through this center port. It'll go up, go around, and then come out this back, which I think will work just fine. Okay, so I think that'll work fine for this model. Uh, you can see I now have both mold halves and the conformal cooling channels in there and the new placement of the sprue location. 
Okay, so just like before, I'm going to export these. So just a refresher, go to mold template left, file, export, STL. We'll just overwrite the other one. Final mold left, new, apply the modifiers and selection only, export the STL. And then for the right, do the same thing. Export, STL, and overwrite the right one. Make sure they apply modifiers, selection only, export STL. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up a program called Cheetubox. All right, with Cheetubox open, we come up here to the top left to open file. I'm going to open up those two files I just exported. Okay, so now if I select one and then control select the other one, I can click on rotate over here and then I am going to rotate that 90 degrees and then rotate 90 degrees on the Z. Okay, I'm going to go back to move. I'm going to control click to deselect uh, or to ungroup them. And then here I'm just going to move this by clicking on the arrow of the Z. Just move the. You don't want to have these touching each other uh, because when you start to print this, you don't want anything to fuse. So I'm going to hit control again, go to move and just kind of move both of those into the center. I think that'll work just fine. Now, when I printed these, I didn't print with any type of, of support. I probably should have because once I finally printed it, uh, I did have some separation from the, from the base. So it probably would have been good to elevate these a little bit up in the air or do some sort of raft or something. Uh, to try to have a larger surface area on the bottom so that these didn't separate. Uh, the rest of it printed pretty pretty well. And, and the other thing is if you have any warping or, or separation from the build plate, you want that on the bottom and not on the top where you have the sprue holes. Um, so it was acceptable to have a little bit of warping on the bottom, but if you want to try to get rid of that, you, you'll probably want to use you know some sort of support. But for right now, I won't, uh, and then I'm gonna go into the settings. So I have an AnyCubic Photon Mono 2K, and the resin that I'm gonna be using is this Soraya Tech uh, Sculpt Clear. Uh, it's a high heat resin that, that does a pretty good job. Um, I, I know other people have used a, a couple other ones, but this one has worked fairly well for me. Uh, and these are all my settings, but but again, even if you have the exact same 3D printer as me, you probably want to run some uh, resin tests on the resin that you're using, uh, just to make sure that you know all the printers have different LED screens. Uh, th there's lots of different factors that could play into it, but I'm just showing you the settings that I'm using for this particular Soraya Tech. Uh, sculpt clear. Okay. So then I'm just going to hit slice. Now if you watch the second part of the video you'll see that there's more stuff in here than after that first part. Um, but this is where you kind of go in and you can make sure that you know all of these dots here from the conformal cooling channels that we did in the in the later part of the video um, and you just kinda wanna go through and make sure everything looks okay it looks like it is okay so then this is the point where I save it to my SD drive and then that is what will go to the 3D printer again I'm using this Soriatex Sculpt Clear now the instructions say that uh, you should use this at at least uh, 25 degrees Celsius, which I believe is around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I like to do before I print 
is I like to take the bottle and just put it on my 3D printer and crank up the heated bed just to warm the resin. And then once this is completed, uh, I also like to set up a space heater and run it for, you know, a couple of minutes in front of my resin 3D printer. And this is just really to kind of warm up the build plate, warm up the printer itself, just so that even if my resin is at the 25 degrees Celsius, my machine is not cold to start off with. And then, of course, you need to shake your resin very, very well. Uh, I'll pour it in, and then we'll start printing. So if you're printing it on the side, it, it does take longer to print, um, but it's, it is printing both sides at the same time, so it's not that bad. So now that the print is done, uh, I'm going to take it out. And uh, with this particular resin, it recommends that you don't just uh, put it in uh, the isopropyl alcohol for more than 30 seconds. So what I end up doing is kind of washing it a little bit with the isopropyl and then using a soft hair brush to kind of uh, wipe away any of the resin. I might dip it in the isopropyl for, for a little bit. But it's more of just uh, trying to get the, the extra resin off. And then once it's completely dry, you want to make sure it's dry and that you don't have any liquid resin on it. And you also don't have any wet isopropyl alcohol on it. And then once that's done, uh, I put it in this cure station for about 15 minutes to, to let it fully cure. So the next step that I do, uh, because I do get some kind of what is called elephant footing at the bottom of the 3D print, I like to take a file and just make sure that I don't have any sections that are, that are sticking out at the bottom of the 3D print. Then I'll take my aluminum mold, I'll unscrew the bolts on the back. Uh, because this mold is tapered, uh, you have to insert the mold from the from the back and then uh, one other thing that I end up doing a lot is if you if you notice that you start to get flashing or that the parts are not sitting flush with each other sometimes it, it's a good idea to just put a little bit of masking tape on the back of the 3d mold and then that way you you kind of can uh, shim or flush up the uh, 3D printed part from any type of warping or shrinkage that you got while doing the 3D printing. Okay, so with the mold okay and all together, um, I have heated up polypropylene pellets up to 165 degrees. Um, I am using the Buster Beagle 3D injection molding machine with the SC100 pneumatic cylinder. And because that cylinder has so much more power than the smaller cylinder, uh, I only have the PSI on my air compressor up to 40 PSI. So I will inject and uh, I'll hold the pressure on the injection for about 20 seconds uh, and then I'll let it go uh, and then I will take my compressed air and and spray it into the um, conformal cooling channels that we did in the second part of the video so I run that for about uh, 20, 20 seconds or so uh, and then I start taking off all of the C clamps and the vise. Now I know it looks like this takes a while to remove all of these C clamps and, and the vise, but you have to remember that you know the injection molding process uh, generates obviously a lot of heat and you do need to account for a little bit of cool down time. So whether I was releasing the mold or not, there's so much plastic in there, and because we're because the 3D printed molds do retain a little bit more of the heat than the aluminum molds, uh, you you do have to give it a little bit of time to cool off. 
So once I get these separated, you'll see I'll separate these and then I'll actually stick one half of the mold, the, the, the side that doesn't have any of the, uh, the plastic still stuck to it. And I'll put that in front of a fan off to the side. And that's all really to continue to cool that mold down even further. Um, and then I just uh, take the part out, remove the sprue, and it's ready to go. And so you'll see me kind of um, go through quite a few molds here. And, um, and it did a pretty good job. Now there, there are some, some changes that I would have made to this mold uh, if, I, if I do it again. And uh, part of it was I did get um, a little bit of cracking on the back side of the mold. So I might want to readjust my design a little bit on the back so that, um, so that I can try to limit that. Another thing that you didn't see me do in this video was I created some extra pockets behind the part that was, that was mostly cracking. Um, and the reason I did that was to try to save some resin on the mold. Um, but it might, have, it might have fared a little bit better had I not done that. And then probably about 25 um, molds into this particular mold, I noticed that the seven on this lock um, broke off. Now it was it was a very kind of delicate feature on this uh, mold, so I think I might have either gone for um, numbers that were extruding out or just not so deep on the numbers because as you can see it's it's pretty deep so uh, the only part that ended up kind of breaking on one half of the mold was was that seven but other than that you know everything worked pretty pretty decent on this mold um, you know the 3d printed molds are also just a really good way as a proof of concept for your part so if you're happy with it you could then potentially go to an aluminum mold or if you're just more careful about the the way in which you design some of this thing taking into account kind of the fragility of it and making sure that you don't make anything uh, stick out that's too intricate then uh, then I think you'd be okay so that's uh, really it for now uh, if you enjoyed this please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for uh, more things to do with injection molding, 3D printers, uh, laser engravers. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the process that I haven't gone over in this video, please do leave a comment and I'll try to answer anything I can. Um, but that's it for this time, so we'll see you guys next time. All right, bye-bye.